today on Alaskan Ballistics for barrel length 223 Remington 60 grain B-Max test. Okay, welcome back to Alaskan Ballistics. This is Chuck. This is the first hand loads I've done by myself in a long time. I used to hand load a lot when I lived in Mississippi and Georgia. When I moved to Alaska, I didn't hand load as much, but I collected stuff over the summer and finally got a press and got everything back into it recently. So, we loaded a thousand rounds of 22 VMAX 60 grain, and we're going to do a chronograph test out of four barrel links. If you want to know about the specific load, hit me up on Instagram, MeWe, The Jump, Facebook, those kinds of things, and I'll tell you about the load. YouTube is not freedom of speech when it comes to reloading. So I won't tell you about it all how I did it. I had two batches. One I did with the Hornady scale, and then the Hornady scale tapped out on me, and so I used the Lyman scale. I was very, 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 very specific and made sure every powder charge was the same. But I did buy the brass from Capital Cartridge, and it was various brass processed. So my goal was if it shot less than two inches at 100 yards, it was good, you know, trading ammo or something like that. Good training ammo, trading ammo. These were the bullets I could find at the time, and I thought 60 grain B-Max would be a decent little home protection ammo because it's heavy enough that it should give you some penetration. And we're not doing a penetration test just because of time and of money and all that kind of stuff but we are going to do four barrel lengths all four ar-15s over the chronograph and i've got two batches and i put five rounds from each batch in each magazine so without further ado let's roll the video all right 20 inch gun 60 grain b-max first five are for my first lot number second five are for my second lot number here we go Thirty-one seventy-two. Thirty sixty-seven. Thirty-one oh three. Thirty-one seventy-eight. Thirty eighty-two. No read. Thirty-one sixty. Thirty twenty-two. Thirty-one oh four. Thirty-one fourteen. So that was a pretty bad spread. Chuck has to do better on his powder charges. Everything was seated the same, it was pretty good. Various casings will do that. Here we go, 18 inch gun. Thirty ninety nine. Twenty nine seventy three. Twenty nine eighty two. Duplicate twenty nine eighty two. Twenty nine eighty five. 3060, 3015, 3904, 3026. A little bit better on the standard deviation, but not much. That first one was high. Here we go, 16 inch carbine. 3075, wow. 2964, 2952. 2950, 2960, 2918, 3002, 3021, 2964, and 2967. So, wow, various cases, not very, you gotta get all the same cases apparently, because that's not very uh, good on the standard deviation. AR pistol, this is a pistol brace, so I'm not putting it to my shoulder. Here we go. Ten and a half inch barrel. Twenty six sixty eight. Twenty five eighty nine. Twenty six seventeen. Twenty six ninety eight. Twenty six ninety four. Twenty six thirty five. Twenty six sixty nine. Twenty six forty nine. Twenty six thirty four. 
2711. So not terrible for a short barrel. Not terrible, four or 500 feet per second from the, the 20 inch off. Let's go check out the Adup slide. So this is our Adup slide. I thought it was really interesting how I know I was precise on with my powder charges, but I got horrible standard deviations. Do you guys think that was the fact that it was just random cases, you know, bought from once fired from a range and, you know, they were just junk cases, essentially. A lot of them had dinks and dents in them, pretty good dents in the shoulder, you know. So let me know what you guys think. I know the dinks in the shoulder affect accuracy a lot. I've seen, you know, bullets fly an inch and a half off because of that before at 100 yards. So let me know what you think. This week's shout out goes to Modern Mountain Man. He just crossed 4,000 subscribers. So go and give him some love over there. Good videos, some shooting videos, some philosophical thought videos, and all sorts of other good videos. Go check him out. Modern Mountain Man. So this was my first group with the hand loads. Very bad. That was the very first shot. I was like, oh boy. And then the, the rest of them were around here. This is, this is just scratching the target. And this was my second group. I got four touching. And one down here, so they're about, I don't feel like I pulled this one, but could have been. So they are actually really nice right there. And that Those four shots are the tightest group I've ever had of that rifle. However, different brass, just random brass, you're going to get stuff like that happening. That down there is from a 6.5 Creedmoor Begara earlier. This was shooting it out of my 16 inch, just really fast, and seeing where it hit comparatively. So... That's that, so it works. So I did go out to the public range and group these. I grouped them with my 20 inch barrel. This is me firing my 16 inch barrel. I didn't get any footage of me shooting the 20 inch barrel. But as you can see, they grouped all right. This is just me doing a function test on them basically. And I sped this up a little bit. So you guys let me know, how can I improve these? Is the random casings? I did have an injection pattern be a couple weird here in this rifle. So, y'all let me know what you think about that. We're on Instagram, Facebook. We're on MeWe, The Jump. Guys, please let me know what you want to see on the channel. You know, if you can, help us out. Please share all our videos. YouTube has really been killing our views lately. And we haven't been getting as many. So, God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.